Yeah, yeah thank you. But, uh, thanks for the invitation by uh, Snezana. But uh, today uh, I will uh, talk about uh, some kind of approach uh, we developed to analyze the structure of turbulence. Uh, also, this approach may generally work uh, for other uh, complex systems. Um, <clears throat> As we know that, uh, uh, so that uh, we do a lot of simulation or experimentation, therefore at uh, a lot of data. So at the key point is how to analyze those data. Uh, for instance, at uh, in turbulence, at uh, we do flow visualization and we do spectrum and structural function and so on. So now the question is that uh, those approach uh, sufficiently effective to extract at the physics we want. Sometimes that may be okay, but sometimes that may not. So afterwards, I will show examples that why not. So therefore, to overcome those kind of uh, problems, because we produce a lot of data, but if that no outcome, so this is not worth doing. So that uh, possible solutions are typically we, we do larger at Reynolds number. Or actually, our alternative that uh, the solution is that uh, we may also pro uh, develop a new data analysis methods so that uh, this way may be more important. So <clears throat> uh, here that uh, new methods I'm, I'm, uh, I'm talking about um, uh, is uh, something to understand that uh, the field structure because that we believe that uh, dynamics and physics that uh, must be inherited by the field structure. If we know the field structure, then that uh, we may also know dynamics. Uh, here that uh, also, this point is very important. Structure analysis that should serve the purpose of quantification, but not just at doing visualization or illustration. If we do that a structure, we just had to visualize structure without had a quantification at a, or anything more. So then that also, this is not what we want. So here that uh, the structure I'm talking about at, uh, from our analysis, we think at which structure definition should that satisfy those kind of important properties. For instance, non-locality, the structure need to be quantitatively defined. Also, this condition very important at space filling. Uh, here that uh, from this relation, suppose that X is a kind of property. So if we want to study that uh, this property of that uh, the flow field, but not a, not a part of the field, but overall of the, the field, then that X actually can be uh, rewritten at, uh, as this kind of integration. Here that uh, P1, Pn are that uh, parameters, characteristic parameters to describe the structure. P here is a joint PDF. So if the structure not space fading, this relation does not hold. That's why that structure needed to be space fading. Then that uh, we search at uh, the literature so that uh, the structure definition to satisfy all the um, the conditions I mentioned, uh, it actually, it's not easy. Therefore, it's uh, causing that uh, he ask uh, such kind of question that uh, is geometry uh, naturally identifiable that uh, interpret flows. So this question seems not to be trivial. So here that uh, from uh, 2006, we did a kind of work. So here in this talk, at uh, first, I will go quickly about uh, the work we have done in the past years. Then I, pr I will also at uh, show some kind of new that uh, progress we did uh, in recent years. Here that uh, we produce uh, that uh, uh, dissipation element uh, at uh, a method. This method here that uh, you can see from this plot that uh, start from here that uh, the dark dots are the, can be considered as kind of at a spatial point and that uh, if we move along the trajectory, we can reach at uh, the maximum and the minimum of the, of the scalar quantity. Then that uh, you see at uh, the part Bounded by green line is uh, we define as D because that uh, in this region that uh, all the grid cells uh, the trajectory will share the same pair of extreme points. Here that uh, I show some examples that from DNS data that uh, this is a D, this is another D. Here we use two different uh, parameters to characterize the D. One is that uh, the, the length scale, so that uh, the line that uh, connecting the mark maximum point and minimum point. Another parameter is delta phi, phi is the scalar quantity. So phi maximum minus phi minimum. So let's take a look at uh, this joint PDF that, uh, for the passive scalar we got from DNS data. And in this plot, you see here, we have a kind of conditional mean. So which is this one. 
So this conditional mean can be considered as the equivalent of the structure function. So uh, surprisingly, this structure function here, the data actually Reynolds number very, very small so that we can still get very good scaling. This is a compensated scaling so that uh, by out to the power of one third, so that this can apply too. So it's, uh, it's very good. Then if we use structure function, actually we cannot get this kind of scaling. Then that, uh, the explanation is that uh, in the flow field at different regions like A, C, or B, actually they have that different at uh, the correlation properties. So if we do structure functions that uh, just as it makes everything, structure function will mix everything together so that then that we cannot see at uh, a kind of at uh, properties, we are separated. But if we do the D analysis that then those regions, A, C region or B region that will be separated. Therefore, it is a scaling that the behavior can be much improved. Then that afterwards, we also uh, proposed a, a model of that, uh, the PDF of the D lens here that uh, we consider this 1D model, then that we cut this 1D model into segments. And also uh, these segments, those, these points also at uh, we are merged together because of molecular diffusion. And that uh, also we have another kind of uh, drift term. So put everything together, we can derive a kind of a PDF, the lens PDF in this equation. Uh, so here, gamma is eigenvalue. Okay. Uh, L tilde is a normalized L. So L normalized by L mean. Then that we got this PDF uh, equation. So then, uh, you see it uh, from DNS data, we, we found that our, that uh, the uh, model solution can match the DNS results very well. So for different Reynolds numbers, yet uh, all those points almost had to collapse. Actually, that uh, very interesting thing is that we did uh, that uh, not only for isotropic turbulence, but for other cases like uh, combustion case, that uh, the length skew also at uh, roughly that uh, follow this kind of uh, distribution. So at uh, this is a very interesting result. Now that uh, actually we found that uh, in recent years, we found that uh, the D approach, of course, that we got some good results. However, not enough because let's see this kind of, for instance, a kind of C surface. We, if we want to study the structure of this surface, if we use DE method, we can only detect the very small structures. So because that here you have that only surface, a lot of it, uh, the, the fluctuation that we can only get at a small units. But here that you see it uh, on this plot, we also have kind of a large structure and even larger, those kind of things. If we want to study those kind of structures, we just use the D approach, that's uh, not enough. Therefore, we want to do extension. So at uh, here, uh, therefore, at, uh, I proposed at a multi-level that D structure. Idea is the following. So at uh, if we consider that uh, here, this is a one dimensional profile, that uh, we, here we have that uh, all those kind of uh, points. So red points and blue points that are extreme points. However, that you see the small points are very different from large ones. So the difference is what? The difference is that uh, you see at this kind of small points, if the red one is maximum, but this maximum only in a very narrow range, it is a maximum. If we go a little bit further from that, so at, uh, this red point will not be a maximum. But if we see it as the large, that red dot. So it will be that uh, the maximum that in a very broad range. So which means that uh, those kind of extreme points, they have that uh, they are valid with respect to different window size. So smaller one that valid only in very small window size, but larger one that valid in a you know, kind of broad at uh, the, the range. Then based on this idea, so you see at uh, least the 1D check here that if window size is small, we just got uh, those extreme points. But if we increase that uh, the window size, so that uh, the number of extreme points that uh, will decrease. Then that uh, based on this idea that uh, we uh, will be able to construct a multi-level D here, those are the algorithm here that uh, simply speaking, that uh, we just uh, smooth away that uh, the lower level extreme points, then that uh, we keep that uh, the higher level extreme points to identify these, then that we feel back, the original field back that to each identified D, then that we study that uh, the, the property. So that uh, here that uh, 
the here lower level and higher level depends on the window size you preset. Therefore, it, by doing that, we can get uh, uh, these at different levels, layer by layer. So that's a multi-level D idea. Now let's take a look here. If we consider the artificial two scale field, we see here we have that large scales and also scale, small scales. Then large scales we got a large D, so it's bounded by the thick lines. Then at the the thin lines are the small Ds, so at all those Ds are space filling, and also those are D structure we detect from uh, real turbulence with the increase of window size that uh, the number of extreme points had decreased at a lot and the D become larger and larger. Therefore, you see that uh, we increase the window size, we can see that uh, the bigger and bigger uh, the spatial structure. So uh, we use our approach to detect at uh, the Brownian motion, 2D Brownian motion, then because at uh, uh, fractal Brownian motion has theoretical solution that uh, of that uh, uh, the structure function, then use our methods, we also get the same. Okay, same scaling that uh, here the structure function is a length scale, so it can match that a theoretical that uh, the result. Here is the isotropic turbulence we got at uh, very good at scaling. So now that uh, we detected some other that a uh, little bit at uh, the more challenging problem that uh, one is Lagrangian turbulence. Here those are the DNS data. If we use a st structure function, actually we cannot see uh, clearly initial range. So that you see it, uh, uh, compensated form, they are now applied to, so that, uh, they are just around the curves. But if we use our approach here that you see very clearly, here at least two different uh, approach, but uh, they follow almost the same idea, okay? That at least that kind of good apply to. So to help us detect that uh, the uh, scaling relation, then for 2D turbulence, that uh, we know 2D turbulence is a kind of uh, dual cascaded phenomena. Then so with our approach, we can also see clearly. Uh, for instance, here, uh, in this plot, uh, we see that uh, the structure function that uh, result, we cannot uh, get at uh, the two that uh, initial uh, range, so that's just around the curve. But uh, if we use multi-level DE, that uh, you see it uh, here, uh, different, uh, the all the structure function that uh, then that uh, always that uh, they they have that clear that uh, two different power that is uh, a scaling scaling loss. The this uh, result is a very interesting one. Recently we got uh, because that we studied wall turbulence uh, for that uh, in wall turbulence uh, that uh, different layers. For instance, we have a viscous sub layer and log layer and outer layer. Especially that uh, the log layer that uh, has kind of uh, structural similarity. So, but uh, how to define structure that is not easy. So that uh, people try different approach. So you see it uh, using our multi-level D, uh, let's uh, take a look of this plot. You see it uh, here, if Y plus equal to 60 and 100, then you see it uh, those two, here we check that the conditional, uh, the, uh, conditional mean of delta phi. Okay. Uh, here, if we phi defined as u, use u prime to u prime defined as that phi, then they see these two curves they almost collapse. So in the log region, so collapse means kind of structural similarity. Uh, but here you see if y plus equal to two point eight at viscous sub layer, so that the shape is very different, and also y plus uh, equal to uh, here that. Uh, uh, this one that uh, 9.7 also at very different from this curve. Here, if we use that V prime as V and the W prime as V, that almost we got the same thing. And also here we started that uh, the conditional mean of turbulence inside each DE. Uh, same conclusion. If at uh, in the uh, log layer region at Y plus 60, 80, you see at uh, all these kind of relations that collapse. But uh, if at uh, in the viscous sub layer and very different from that outer layer region, also very different. So therefore, at, uh, here we define a new approach that uh, which will help us to detect that uh, the structural similarity. So from wall turbulence, we see it clearly. Also, we did some tentative tests that, uh, for, to do at image at a smoothing that uh, use this kind of uh, multi-level D idea. So that's kind of application. I will not talk about that. The, here that uh, the uh, the last uh, one I want on to the interesting result I also want to uh, share with uh, you is uh, how to define that uh, 
turbulent eddy. So this plot we see it from that many different books. So, but this plot is just a phenomenological description. So that people are always talking about eddy. Okay, big eddy break down into smaller ones, the smaller one. But the eddy that if it's possible to to really to see those eddies, so far that people cannot do that. Then if you use our multiple level ideas, that is kind of at the that possibility. For example, at the largest ID is defined as what? It's defined as a D at a very high level. So if we set window size to be very big, we got at just at the large, very large D. Then if we decrease the window size, we got at a smaller, small Ds. And then if at window size shrink to zero, we got a D at a zero plus level, so very small D. So therefore, you see those two pictures, they share a lot of similarity. So this kind of tentative way to define that turbulent idea, maybe the better approach, but at least this is a kind of possible solution. Okay, so uh, let me uh, summarize. Here that uh, we believe that, uh, of course, to produce data very important, but <laughs> more, another thing also very important is that uh, to propose new data analysis ideas also important. That uh, then that uh, data analysis that uh, should be quantitative, that uh, but not at the qualitative things. So that, uh, also physically we think that the length scale is determined by structure. So that uh, scale separation because a DE can separate uh, the statistics, therefore we got at uh, the uh, better scaling laws. Then that uh, from that uh, the geometrical point of view that. Uh, for instance, a D approach, multi-level D approach that uh, give us some promising results. So uh, this approach, I would say also that in principle, also generally applicable at, uh, for other uh, field to analyze other field phenomena, not only for turbulence, we may also analyze other things. The example like that uh, we do smoothing. So at, uh, once at the, 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 the structure is that kind of continuum field, always we can use this kind of idea to, to analyze. Uh, okay, so at the uh, rest of the time, so that uh, uh, I will, uh, I would like to do some discussion with you and get at uh, the helpful that feedback. Okay, thank you. Do you have any questions? So it was a lovely talk. I love scale separation problems. Um, and I was curious, I've got two questions. First, I'm curious if you've tried to think about applying um, computational topology-based methods, like sub that persist homology or something like this, to try and have uh, better descriptors of scale separation? Uh, OK, so at, uh, uh, of course, there are a lot of at, uh, the, uh, the image and the processing the techniques. Mm -hmm. so at, uh, yeah. From our understanding that uh, if it if we just do an imaging, that we have a lot of approach. But if we want to analyze a physical problem, this kind of that image processing approach should also follow that you see the so-called that the uh, natural structure of that the physical process. Mm -hmm. So if we consider scalar problem, then that. Uh, of course, we can define that uh, geometry that uh, many different ways, but at uh, the natural structure typically is what, then we believe that uh, the scalar gradient that uh, this is, uh, may be more relevant to physics. So, uh, also, that, uh, we study at, uh, the, the, the vector problems that of course that uh, the, the streamline that may be more relevant to physics. So that's just our original consideration. <laughs> So, I mean, I'm not completely sure I would agree with that. I mean, I think that if you use something like persistent homology, you'd get a unique map between all of your critical points of all of the different indices, right? And then you, and because it's basically a filtered graph, a distance filtered graph, you would then be able to have geodesics that connect all of those critical points together. And so I think it probably would capture a lot of the geometric features that you're interested in. I'm just throwing that out there. Um, the second thing uh, that... Oh, okay, so, so maybe uh, let, let me do some kind of comment. So here that uh, you see that using our approach that uh, uh, we want to, for instance, we want to get a large scale structure. Uh -huh. Then that uh, actually we do not want to destroy that original information. Mm -hmm. Then that if, we, if you do filtering, then that uh, the original field actually will be, be changed. So that's the uh -huh. difference. Well, because you have all of the distance filtered graphs, I think you get to choose what scale of information you're keeping and throwing away. 
Um, but but uh, in either case, I was just curious if you thought about it. The second question, though, that I oh, had, okay. to do, uh, has to, yeah, the second question that I have is it seems like you want to introduce some kind of distance-based metrics associated with capturing the structural similarity. Um, and I'm just kind of curious um, if you've thought at all about like any kind of optimal transport-based distance metrics or what other kind of distance metrics um, you've maybe considered. Uh, okay, yeah, this is also at a good point. <laughs> so, at, uh, uh, so actually, the, uh, some kind of flexibility in define that uh, the, uh, the characteristic at uh, the parameters uh, here that uh, uh, we choose that, for instance, at a straight line, we can also choose that the curvy line may also something else. So, uh, but at, uh, we, we tried, okay, we tried at a different choice and found that, uh, for instance, scaling relation and other physical properties basically will be the same. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Hi, you showed one example of a synthetic field uh, application. Now, it would be interesting to have another form of synthetic field, which is some Gaussian random field, and you've projected it to the um, uh, solenoidal part and used a, and applied sort of the uh, empirical power spectrum that's known, K okay, to my, minus five-thirds scaling, and see what you get so that then you could uh, pinpoint what features specifically of momentum equation evolution as compared to that synthetic case uh, the method is capturing? Okay, oh yeah, this is a really a good point. Is that, uh, uh, at least time that uh, we did not try, so that, uh, only at uh, uh, simple, but uh, I think that uh, I really had, uh, got some inspiration that, uh, from your point, so uh, thank you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, have you thought of using a Lyapunov point of view that is consider two fluid elements that are initially close together and follow them and see whether they stay together or whether they exponentially separate? And if they stay together, then they're probably in the same structure. And if they separate, then that's a separation between structures. Yeah, but, uh, uh, for for. You see, it, we did that D that uh, since 2006, and at that time we also, yeah, we, we, we tried that. Uh, so that, uh, uh, for instance, uh, in from 2D data, so at uh, 3D at too big, 2D data, then that we check. But sometimes that, uh, you see, if that we follow that elements, then because extreme points may may have kind of that, uh, the kind of abrupt at the change. So suddenly that uh, extreme points disappear. So that uh, those D that also will have kind of an immediate change have a kind of reconnection and so on. Then we follow, then sometimes that uh, those fees that will be lost, <laughs> that we must stop. Yeah, so that, uh, it's it's possible that uh, we, we do see it, uh, something at in a finite time that uh, then that they may to get closer or, or, or separate. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Do you have any more questions for Professor Wang? If not, then let's give Professor Wang another one. One more question, I see. Uh, I'm just curious. Um, is, is you you mentioned that it's a, like uh, you you apply them to model complicated uh, complex flows, but there may be, you know, in addition to like turbulence, there may be some other self similar processes in which uh, like like large velocities might occur at smaller land scales in contrast to super diffusive turbulence, like you know maybe sub diffusive processes. Would your approach be applicable to these processes as well? Uh, formally, I, I firmly believe that it will work because that, you see, if we just have a flow field, any flow field, we can detect at extreme points and so on, so then scale. Uh, here, uh, you see, this is nothing to do with turbulence, okay, just at uh, the geometric typology and also detect at extreme points. So if you've got data, it's kind of field data, so for sure we'll be able to detect that. Yeah, if you have data, we can try. <laughs> I don't have data, I'm just curious. Yeah, okay, yeah, so a uh, yeah, lot of possibility. <laughs> On that note, let's give Professor Wang another round of applause and move to the next speaker. You.